guys, my name's Laura and I'm the Specky Seamstress and today you might notice I'm in a very slightly different angle. Apologies, I snapped my tripod this morning which was something I didn't think I could do. So I even impressed myself. Um, I thought I would come and chat to you today about my experience of going to the Bath Sews Sewing Day uh, which was on Sunday. Now I did attempt to film a vlog as soon as I got home but I was shattered, <laughs> so tired. My husband said to me, I'm not sure it's a great idea you film a vlog, Laura, um, but I cracked on. I was in a dressing gown, <laughs> my hair was all tied up in a bun, and I said, no, it'll be good, it'll show the like, whole experience of the day. No, you guys do not need to see me in my dressing gown unable to string a sentence together because I'm too tired that's just not something we need to put on the internet so I'm back it is now Tuesday and uh, I thought I would just refilm um, my thoughts about the day now it was my first sewing day and um, I've been to a couple of sewing meetups but never a day where you kind of roll along with your machine and a project and so so I also thought I'd just share a little bit about um my experience of going to a sewing day and what I've learned from it for the next time so the bath sewing day is in bath <laughs> it's a miracle um and I don't live in bath as some of you may I um dropped Laura who organizes the bath sewing day a message to say would it be okay if I still came along because I like the idea of going to a sewing day or before I went I had liked the idea of going but a lot of the ones I'd seen were in London and getting my machine to London although I don't live very far away from London is quite difficult Um, I don't really like the idea of driving into central London and getting the train in with my machine and a project bag and getting the tube just doesn't really appeal to me so I yeah had been on the hunt for one that was sort of a little bit easier for me to get to and um Bath is just about an hour and a half drive from me so I thought I could go along and it was great I loved it I'm so pleased I went and I met lots of lovely ladies um who all sewed some amazingly beautiful things um while we were there for the day and yeah definitely recommend so I'll pop in some it. footage here so you can uh, see what the day was like. So Laura had hired out a big hall at Bath Spa University and set up tables that people could base themselves out. So we all had at least kind of one or two people that we were sewing with, which was nice. Um, as you can see, everyone had brought their machines and their projects and were all really busy sewing. And this was taken quite near the end of the day where my space was a lot tidier than it was for most of the day. Now, straight after lunch, I thought I would film a little bit of me sewing. So I was sewing the Stacey jean jacket and after lunch, I had reached the point where I had assembled the two front pieces and the back piece. Um, I had tried to get quite a bit done at lunch, so I felt like it was achievable to finish throughout the day. And I cracked on uh, while some people were still outside eating and kind of gathering some bits and pieces and thought I would attach the facings. So I gleefully went ahead sewed what I thought was my first seam of the uh, afternoon only to find that rather frustratingly my bobbin had run out of thread so it's probably a good job you can't see or hear me uh, my face at this point anyway because I'm looking at the next stage and then I go ah, ah, um, because there's you know there's no bobbin thread and I had to rewind so I took a nice cup of tea, which was pretty regular throughout the day, and uh, and carried on. And as you can see throughout this, people are coming and going, taking breaks, having chats. So the day was a really busy one with people kind of carrying on with about their projects as, as quickly or as um, chilled out as they wanted to, really, which was really lovely. You can see the little bag that we were using as a bin on our table. Something I definitely learned was to bring something to use as a bin because Angie emptied out this little bag 
um, for us to share as a bin. And I definitely used more of it. You can see by how much red <laughs> is in it, I think. So that's a good lesson for anyone going to a sewing day is take something that can be used as a bin. Also take several unpickers because, as you could see, I had to go and gather mine from the floor where I had thrown it somehow <laughs> in my um, in my morning sewing. I don't quite know how I'm at. Now I took two bags with me <laughs> as well as my machine. I took a little project bag. This is a lovely bag that um, JJ from the Camden Stitch made and kindly gave me, um, which was perfect for my pre-cut out pattern and a couple of other bits and pieces. <laughs> and then I panically, like panically, that's not a word, panicked the day before, I packed another bag full of kind of other bits and pieces I could get on with <laughs> and um, tools I thought I might need. And then I came home with three bags <laughs> because we got given a goodie bag um, with the Bath Sews logo on it. And inside the goodie bag, we got a thread. Very lucky. This is my favourite colour, this bright teal. Um, and it's a Coates Moon thread. We got a fat quarter. And I love this fabric. It's kind of quite cute, isn't it? I think it will be quite good as pocket material. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to use it for. We got an unpicker in a bright green. So hopefully I don't lose it as much as my white ones that I take everywhere. Um, a couple of cheeky discount codes. Um, and then we also got a Kylie and the Machine label. Um, which is in the jacket that I'm wearing because um, this is the jacket that I made on the day. This is the Style Arc Stacy jacket and it's supposed to be a denim jacket uh, but I've made it in this. It's like a thick heavyweight linen. It's really quite stiff. Um, if I take it off you can see my Kylie and the Machine me made label. It's not going to focus, is it? Um, now, I'm not going to talk massively about the pattern. Um, it's had a lot of love online on Instagram in the last couple of days. So thank you so much, everyone who's commented or sent me messages about this. Um, because I, so I got this pattern um, it's a style the style arc pattern style arc were having like a clear out of their paper patterns in the UK on Amazon I don't really understand the logic but <laughs> I got this quite cheap is what, what it boiled down to and um, I got it because I saw Claire from Penguin and Pear dressmaking um, had bought it in the same so that's why I bought it and I've been speaking to Claire and because I'd like to make another couple of versions um, me and her are going to do a little bit of a collaboration talking about the pattern a little bit later on in the year. So stay tuned for that and uh, ping me any questions that you have about the pattern in the comments below or over on my Instagram channel at the Specky Seamstress. Because it's along as a wearable twirl, um to sew. It was a, a pattern I'd never used before. I pre-cut all my pieces um, about two weeks before the event which Laura asked us to do because there wasn't a huge amount of floor space um, or, there, or there weren't any cutting tables um, for people to use. Um, now I'm so pleased I had to cut it out beforehand because I think it meant I could just kind of crack on. Um, but <laughs> I said it was my first sewing event. I had no concept of how long this would take me. I think when you're at home you take breaks or you know you have to do things like pick up the cat sick and <laughs> take out the bins um or is that just me <laughs> maybe um and so you take lots of regular breaks but you're also you can kind of sit and crack on if you decide to and I, I just didn't really know how what the environment would be like and whether I would be able to sew this quite easily I, I know that the instructions are reasonably scant for the style arc um pattern so I kind of wasn't sure like if I would get stuck or bored of sewing that project. I tend to have a couple of projects on the go 
at home so that I can kind of switch between. Um, so I wasn't really sure and I decided that I would take another project with me. So the day before the event I was all packed up ready to go other than my machine and the day before I decided I'd cut out a pair of Winslow culottes. I thought it would be a great project to cut out because it's reasonably simple. So um, i tell you the lesson one thing I learned. You're not supposed to sew the project you plan to make at the sewing day before the sewing day, <laughs> which is what I did. I cut out this project on the Saturday and I just sewed it. Um, and I even halfway through said to my husband, this is not what I'm supposed to do, is it, Nick? And he was like, mm, no, no, but I carried on. Um, and what I ended up doing was actually taking that project with me because I need to unpick the waistband because I made a bit of an error. So as much as I said it was a simple sew, I made a mistake. So um, I took that with me. And then I thought, well, I've got to take something else now because, you know, I can't just not take this pro this project that I've now sewn up. Um, so I to take with me and then in the morning I panicked even more and <laughs> so yeah I ended up taking loads of projects with me and um I think I'm pleased I did because actually it would have given me the chance to switch between projects if I'd decided to but I think the lesson that I learned was for me at a sewing day a slightly more involved make that's still within the realms of finishing possibility is really good so without really realizing I'd picked the perfect project in the jean jacket because it's involved enough that it's challenging and uh, good to kind of have that focus space to sit and think about it and, and so but it wasn't so difficult and so complicated that it was never going to get finished and I was going to take it home half done um, I'm really bad with leaving half done things in my work in progress box so if I had only got halfway through that I think it would have been quite a long time before I finished it and as it stands the only thing that I need to do is add buttons and I might unpick the hem band because I'm not super happy with it um, but that's kind of by choice it's definitely wearable still um, so I'm pleased about that and I think I would in future at sewing days take that sort of project then with a couple of simpler projects that if I do get bored or if, uh, kind of stuck then I can crack on with something else um so I think that was a lesson I also just <laughs> learned it's so nice to go around and be inspired by what other people are making and listen to their challenges like lots of people came around and said they'd never heard of style arc and I went around and found some pattern companies that I'd not heard of and some patterns that I'd not heard of which is just really nice um to, to be able to do and you know we're all connected through the online community but there's loads of things that we miss all the time so it was quite nice to hear about that and find out about that um so I was grateful for that and I also just thought it was quite interesting going around and seeing what machines people were using so my partner in crime for the day Angie um who is fabric overload on Instagram she uh, so I picked her up um on the way through and she was sewing an amazing pair of Persephone pants, which fit her like to perfection. Um, and she just so happened to have the same overlocker that I have sat on my windowsill that I'm really scared about using, um, which is an old vintage, well, old vintage. It, 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 it's a Bernina uh, Burnett, yeah, Bernina Burnett 334D and it was great to kind of see it functioning and working and it gave me a confidence boost to actually crack on and Angie said that she'll help me out if I've got any questions with it so um that was amazing to see because I've been so nervous and I've been thinking about buying a new overlocker instead so um seeing one up and running and knowing that I've got someone that I can kind of go to to ask for advice about that particular model was really really helpful um so that was that was good to know um I think the biggest lesson for me uh, was just how tiring it was. I couldn't believe how tired I was at the end of the day. And halfway down the motorway on the way home, it just hit me how exhausting it had been concentrating all day um, and driving there in the morning and then concentrating all day and driving back in the evening. I was shattered so although I said it was good to have a bit more of a complex make that I had to think about maybe I need to consider having some simpler makes if 
I've got a long way to travel. I know that <laughs> Bath Sows who are on Instagram are ho- holding some more events throughout the rest of the year. So please do go check them out and I'll link their details below. But I hope that was a bit of a useful insight into a sewing day. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments box. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.